in the past, I've done approximately uh, 20 years of Jump Rope for Heart. And that was my sole, sole fundraiser uh, that I participated in as a teacher. I was really attracted to the Health Moves Minds uh, fundraiser and program overall. It just filled the gap. I was um, pleased to be part of the pilot program for Health Moves Minds, and it really attracted me because of its huge kindness component. And with the built-in fundraiser, I could basically um, serve two purposes in one program of gaining funds for my PE department, which I had a zero budget for equipment, and also give to the students what I felt was a need to highlight um, um, cooperation, getting along, uh, positive student attitudes. And when the kindness theme came to light, it really shifted everything in my PE program to the good. So I was very um, hook, line, and sinker sold on Health Moves Minds uh, when I tried it as a pilot school, and it has done wonders for my building. I really like um, all aspects of Health Moves Minds, but it's it's easy and um, comes with a message for the kids. So not only as a service project of um, students helping to raise money, um, we, we choose the give back option and we choose a charity for our school. So not only with the kids having that buy-in of the giving part, um, they also learn the, the actual daily skills to infuse kindness in their own lives. And it really has made such a kindness culture in our school. And that is that is the the part that they they don't really tell you when you're signing up for a fundraiser, hey, this is an added benefit that really could happen in your school. And because it was so evident in my school, um, it's the kids, it, the kids look forward to it. I look forward to it. And we have just this continuation year after year of this positive, um, positive program and positive culture for our school. For our school, the pay it forward portion of Health Moves Minds was a, a huge factor for us to say yes, because uh, we commonly give to um, American Heart Association in the past programs that we've participated in. Our town has really wrapped their arms around American Heart Association because of some students who have had health issues and stroke issues. And so we have um, a huge community support for that. And with the pay it forward structure in Health Moves Minds, it just made a natural fit to choose the American Heart Association as our charity of our choice. And giving that um, purpose to the, to the fundraising allowed the students to talk about giving and talk about you know, who, who it affects the greater community um, with every dollar that we raise, as well as our own physical education department and buying equipment that we can use daily. We commonly have our fundraiser portion in January and we follow it with a end culminating event in February. And our, our school raises funds for three weeks. Um, and then we, we have daily challenges or weekly challenges for grade levels, but it's all working up to our family night. And in the past we had had um, parents come in during PE classes and we've just found that this new way is just works for our building. And we have an after school event uh, on a weekday and it's a drop-in basis and we hold an obstacle course. So we, we find that it's a better advocating tool for the parents um, to invite them into our school, have the kids participate in the obstacle course. And then all down through the hallway, we can have tables um, advocating what we do in our, our class and showing um, student work, especially with the all the lessons that go with it for Health Moves Minds. Um, I've been taking pictures and we can highlight certain students, we can highlight certain classes, we can highlight their fundraising efforts. Um, we can 
give them stuff to take home, uh, little informational worksheets or coloring packets for the younger kids, bookmarks, things like that we have available for um, them to take home. And so that the, the program's ideas and concepts just keep, keep continuing throughout the year. Um, so we changing it to an after school event for us has been a huge advocacy tool and let alone the kids have great fun. And when they're telling their parents, Oh, I don't want to leave. That's, that's actually a good thing for us and a good, a good problem to have. So, um, it is, we've, we've done this for so many years. We don't need a startup event in our school anymore. A simple email helps, helps kick off the event. And we've chosen to have this as our finale event instead. It's, it seems like the themes each year get better and better. And um, they really have hit home in, in our district for various reasons. Um, we are a, a district that commonly, you know, annually does a fundraiser. So it's not anything new that, that we do a fundraiser and we like to raise money and we have been successful in the past. But for example, last year was Amplify Kindness. So it was acknowledging that we have kindness in our school, but we want to make it bigger and better. And I used the theme um, just coincidentally, I happened to be doing a a speed stack unit and uh, kids were coming into class to stack. And one of the lessons in the Amplify Kindness um, um, tool, tool pack that we have for uh, my age group was about, you know, building up a structure. And so we just, we had cups out, we used cups to build the structure. And it was a really good activity. It didn't take away from what I was doing with speed stacks. It was an, an easy last 15 minutes of class of a way to tie in, um, hey, we're going to be raising money and look at what impact you could have with it. And as they build their structures and then in the lesson, you combine kids together to build a higher structure. And it, it just gives them that visual um, of working together and creating more good. And in this sense, it was a higher, bigger structure. And so um, a cup stacks happened to be out. Cup stacks serve the purpose of, of building in the lesson. And it was a way that I could incorporate the lesson without um, having to take out something in that I was working on in PE to put in a Health Meets Minds lesson. It just naturally jived. And I was able to um, do both tasks of promoting the program and the lesson that I had planned around speed stacks. So the Amplify Kindness was a, a great way a great way to do that. And I love that theme as well as this year, the let kindness guide you. I mean, that's touches home with our district too, because we do an obstacle course for our family night. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, we also just finished our, our first kindness week. We do one in the fall and one in February and we collect cereal boxes for our food pantry. And so the, the whole logo, even where there's like the dot, dot, dot and the tennis shoes go around, like kindness is guiding you. We lined up cereal boxes in our hallways and they tipped over like dominoes. And so that was creating a path around our school. And the longer the path was, it meant we had donated more cereal boxes for the food pantry. So um, we had our technology lady, you know, follow the dominoes with her video camera on her phone. And um, it just shows the kids an yet another illustration of how kindness can get bigger and better and, and go longer as we needed our, our dominoes to go longer um, for the impact. And uh let kindness guide you. I don't, I don't know how they're going to top it for next year, but I just look forward to it each year getting the new theme. And in some way it, it is general, but specific enough. Like it's just that sweet spot where it always seems to apply to something that we're doing in our building. And I, I really appreciate that easy tie in for our health moves minds. The fundraising in Health Moves Minds is very useful for our school because we don't have a annual physical education budget. Um, and 
we've had some ups and downs financially in our district to where um, other programs couldn't get money, but this provided a source of, of income for, for our program, specifically physical education. So I, I feel um, blessed with this as an option. Um, the fundraising for the students gave gave them a purpose to actually share with the charity um, that they knew they could help us in our building and give to the American Heart Association at the same time. Um, and our community loves the American Heart Association, so they've they've been an annual supporter um, for that charity in the past, and it it just came, see, keeps. It seems to keep growing and growing over time. Um, we've in the past, I've had incentives to, you know, um, cut my hair or be duct taped to the wall or something like that in an assembly. And they they just keep, keep trying to beat the last year. So we've changed it instead of a school assembly. Uh, we changed it to holding a roof night. And this is just uh, kind of a... Uh, a different kind of thank you back to the kids where our staff will choose staff members uh, to spend the night on the roof. And that whole evening, kids drop by and they play on the playground and their parents, you know, chat with each other. And we have different games on the blacktop underneath the roof that we're camped out on. And and then they the kids also see us in the morning when the, dr the buses drop off. So we've... Um, We've changed our old traditions a little bit to come to current times. And, and it's just kind of um, a fun day to celebrate all of the accomplishments of the program and have the community bond a little bit. But it, it, it gives um, that parent interaction also so they can be part of the celebration as well as the kids. For our incentives at my school, uh, different years I've offered different incentives. Um, it's, I kind of do incentives more on um, large groups of kids so they can, you're either in, you got it done, or you can move on to a higher incentive, um, meaning there's an incentive for an individual, then there's an incentive for a classroom, and then there's an incentive for our whole school. And I think I feel that that's just been an easy way for me to uh, be able to give back to the kids in, and keep my own mind about myself when it comes time to giving out the incentives. It's, it's simple and it's structured uh, where the individual reward might be a magnet for their locker or a sticker for a water bottle. Um, and then the classroom incentive would be a free time in the gym. Um, not necessarily an extra recess, but similar to that where it's a uh, time where the class would come into the gym because this would be in January and February, which is a lot of times we have inside recess because of the weather uh, being too cold. So that just eliminates that that option of having to cancel and reschedule. We just have it in the gym. I pull out equipment from the closet that we haven't used recently, and they think that's very special. And and a great time and they can even vote on the equipment ahead of time. Um, but that's, I, you know, giving up my time to give back to the kids that donated money and are, are really um, excited about the program is, is easy for me to do. And then I can experience that with them um, as, as a side bonus, but the, the recess time or the um, added uh, gym time would be, um, separate from their PE class. So they don't miss out in what, what other kids are doing in their grade level, but they get something special for them. Um, and they, so that as a class reward has worked in my building. And then as a school reward, if we make our school goal of beating the last year's total, um, I've done different things in the past, like cut my hair or be duct taped to the wall, or we've, um, highlighted kids in an, an assembly, like a jump rope assembly. Uh, but we've moved more towards a, a different event. And it was from an idea um, from a friend, Kyle, who has done it in uh, Missouri. And so 
my kids didn't know it even existed, but uh, when I offered it to them, I said, Hey, you know, if you can reach this goal, we're going to, I'm going to spend the night on the roof. And they're like, what, what are you talking about? And uh, I worked it out with my principal and we happened to have this little ledge on the front of the gymnasium where our, uh, the gym lobby is. And it, it just created a, a nice venue because we could see the playground from that roof and it's right in front of the black top. So I said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be up on the roof if, if you guys can do this. And they had no idea. They were just, they were, they thought it was really weird at first. Um, and I don't even know if it really helped raise money that year because the kids didn't know what it meant in, in one sense, but every year since they are just so excited about roof night. And, uh, another teacher has come to join me. And this year I hope to get our principal and other staff members up as well. Uh, we, we put a tent up there. We, we have a music going on with a speaker. We, we play Frisbee with the kids, uh, from the roof to the blacktop. Uh, we do water balloons, things like that. It's, it's kind of a little, um, parent night can, you know, they can socialize, the kids can play in the playground. We do group dances, uh, things like that. And it, and it lasts until dark. And I tell the kids to go home and, and get a good night's sleep. And I'll see you in the morning when the buses come. Um, and so we do. It also gives me that liberty as a teacher to, to plan it on a warm weather evening. And um, so it's, it's just been something that our kids look forward to now. And I don't really have to hound them about um, a, meeting a certain goal. I mean, our, our community is very generous. And so we, we don't seem to have, um, a, um, we don't seem to ha struggle with beating the last goal from the year before. And I'm, I'm very fortunate to be in that circumstances, but, um, celebrating it with a roof night is, is just really a fun way to do it as a school incentive. So, um, I would suggest that to anybody that, <laughs> that likes a little camping and wouldn't mind giving that back to their kids too. For the classroom incentives, I do um, time for the class to come to the gym, which would be that it would create additional time for the teacher to have for planning um, because I take the kids without the teacher. Um, I also do an an, an and that would be like the classroom that raises the most. I also do a, a time where I schedule in the gym of uh, bonus time for classes that have um, the most kids uh, signed up at a certain date. You know, out of the three weeks that we fundraise, about halfway through, I say, hey, this class has the most kids that are signed up online for fundraising. Um, our school does the um, both online and offline donations. So I, I try to promote the online portion option as, as much as I can, because that means that's less money that I'm counting. Uh, and it's a time saver for me. So I reward the class with the most online kids at a certain cutoff and I give them extra time in the gym uh, as a reward. Um, I highlight the kids that do raise the most, um, money for um, a, a typical donation, a, a $100 donation would not be typical of our school. Um, it, it is an upper tier, I would call it for donation in our school. It, it, we have high, super high school totals, but it really is because so many kids are involved. Um, it's not because we, we have, um, giant donors. Um, but so if at about the hundred dollar mark, I, I give them a fast pass as a reward. And what that means is during the obstacle night, they get a wristband and they can go first in line for one of the four obstacle courses instead of waiting in line for the obstacle course. So it's, it's like when you go to an amusement park and you get to cut in line, <laughs> um, that's their re reward for getting a donation of a hundred dollars or more. And we do have, um, that would be like our top tier of, of donations for our student body, um, which would be more of an individual incentive, um, that I can help. I can help with that. And it costs me nothing and they get the little, um, you know, 
kind of high fives from their kids that they're they're cutting in front of for the line and everybody still gets to participate in the obstacle course so it doesn't take anything away from others. So after the program ends, we get a gift card from Gopher Sport. And uh, this is kind of amazing um, because I come from a district that doesn't have a PE budget. And now I have these gift cards to spend. So one beautiful thing about it is they can accumulate over years. They, they do not expire. And so at the beginning, I used um, some gift card money to buy the consumable kinds of things that, uh, you know, the equipment that are it always seems to be lacking or falling apart, or you need more of because you have bigger class sizes now. And I would buy small items like that um, to continue what we were doing. Now I have this um, <laughs> a hard problem where I, I kind of have money in the bank to spend, if you will. And we started thinking, um, dreaming bigger and, and thinking of bigger things that we could buy from go for sport. So we have um, purchased a nine square in the air, um, which is a, a kind of a big, big ticket item in the sense of a PE teacher buying equipment for your school. I feel I've never had that opportunity in the past. And now i I have one for our school. So that's, that's a neat thing. And it can be used all different times of the year, in, including our roof night um, activities on the, on the blacktop. Um, one year we um, split money with the principal and they bought um, flexible seating for a classroom. And um, right now I have, like I said, some leftover money that I'm kind of holding and um, I'm going to use it as a thank you for this coming year um, in January and February when we have our new event that I can give that as an incentive to like the highest class who donates the most money to the Health Moves Minds program. I can give them, you know, $100, $200 out of the catalog to spend for um, recess equipment or if the teacher chooses, you know, again, flexible seating or, or different kinds of um, equipment out of the five or six catalogs that go for sponsors. Uh, it might not be what I might think of as a physical education teacher, but it would meet the needs of a classroom teacher as well. And so I'm, I'm prepared to offer that for my teachers this year as a way to give back to our building. Um, because like, like I said before, I've, I've never had this much money in the past to spend. So now having it, I can give back to others as well. When I look to spend my Gopher gift cards on physical education equipment, I have found some really neat resources from Gopher Sport. And one of my favorite things that I purchased were the emoji balls, which is a type of a, a gator skin ball, if you will, but it's printed with the different um, smiley face and frowny face and angry face on the ball. And those types of equipment that you can get to just inspire the kids really makes a big impact in the lesson. So when we're talking about um, like the halted principle and how that you might act a certain way because you're hungry or angry, and then we actually have the ball to throw in the parachute with that emoji on it. It just makes a bigger impact for the kids within the lesson. They're excited about it. They, they see it. They they have that um, retention of, the, you know, in their memory because they can visualize it um, as you're talking about it. And it just, again, makes a bigger impact in the lesson. Um, that's just one piece of equipment that I, that I know I love um, that I have purchased with our gift card from Gopher. Um, but in general, to have equipment that the kids can engage in and start conversations about mental health and um, be active overall. And I may get these kids for 45 minutes once a week, and it might be their only 45 minutes that they're going to be active that week. They don't have um, the, they don't have maybe a lifestyle after school or on the weekends that they're active. And so I can get that inspiration in them um, just a little bit better with certain pieces of equipment. And, um, then hopefully they'll be making better choices after school or on the weekends in their own time. It's a, 
as a result. I do feel that having kids ask for money uh, starts different little life skills uh, that that they could use in their daily lives. We, we mention it in P class uh, before they leave uh, about how to ask for a donation and to ex explain that we're having this fundraiser at our school and it's benefiting our P program and the American Heart Association. And uh, is, there a, could, is there a way that you could support our school? Hey, we're doing a Health Miss Minds fundraiser at our school. Would you like to donate to the American Heart Association? And I try to stress the importance of not asking for a specific amount. Let the donor choose what they're able to give, if, if they want to give and what they're able to give. And this has, has worked really good with our kids because they'll come back and, th and they'll be like, you would not believe it. My grandmother gave $20 and I thought she was only going to give $5. And so that kind of just lets it puts the choice in the donor, you know, category where they get the choice to um, choose the amount that they'd like to donate. And then the kids can be respectful in return of any amount, you know, thank you for that $1. That's, that's wonderful. Or that's awesome. Thank you so much for that $20. Um, and I do try and give that message to the kids in PE class before they take that envelope home that, that they're, they're being respectful. They're letting the donor choose and they're showing that gratitude at the end and by thanking them and their polite man manners. And, um, it, it really does. It shows the kids how to handle themselves in that kind of situation and which it really is a life skill. So I, I'm glad that they can uh, grow in that way. And so over the five years I've, I've done it a little different each year, but right from the get go, I loved the idea of respectful listening. And when you are teaching the kids that, you know, of course, that's a common thing for kids to talk when the teacher's talking. And it's a, it's something that you address at the beginning of the year and you try to have them be quiet when the teacher is talking. But now we have the term respectful listening. And that just means, you know, so much more. Not only are you quiet, but you're quiet so that others can listen also that are near near you. And um, you're focused so that you really can listen and use the information that's being shared and your eyes are looking and you're facing the right direction. Like there's, there's more to it. And so teaching them that, um, it has been, I'm thinking I've, I've been teaching for all these years and I've expected them to listen when I'm talking, but now that I have that respectful listening cue, it just works now because they, they really know what it entails. And I've, I've, um, I'm that one word the first year was like, wow, it's, it's working. And then to build with that, like, you know, the, there's a part of the lesson that does handshakes and are you really saying hi or, or are you, or are you, are you saying hi or are you saying hi with wanting to know what the other person is thinking too? Like, do you pause and do you listen for the return part of the conversation? Um, so these, these little tiny life skills have made a big impact. Um, and, and they came from the health moves minds lessons. I, I now use a little bit more from time to time throughout my lessons in the fall. And, and then I have, um, the time to put in more, you know, part of the obstacle course things right before, uh, while we're fundraising right before our family night and using that kind of, not only does it keep the health moves minds name familiar with the kids throughout the year, but it keeps the kindness theme throughout the year. And so we aren't just kind for four weeks while we're doing the lessons and raising money. We're kind and, and showing kindness to others all throughout the year. And it, I've just found that the way I've changed um, from over the past five years using the lesson components have made a bigger impact. Uh, and now it's just expected. And the kids, the kids are everything we do. Well, is that being kind to your classmate? 
Uh, was that being kind to our class? Was that being kind to yourself? These are questions I can instantly turn back to each student and they, they realize like, oh, that behavior is going to stop and I'm going to change it to make a better choice in kindness. And the, the impact and the, the ease in discipline issues, the impact in cooperation among classes, uh, among students in a class has skyrocketed. And I just, I really appreciate that um, over all the different ways I've tried to teach kindness. It just has clicked now. And um, it's, it's a good habit for me as a teacher. It's a good habit for the kids as students. And, and it's a great atmosphere for, atmosphere for our school to have to um, give and receive kindness. And I've really appreciated that impact. And if somebody would have told me that in the pilot year, hey, this is going to happen to your school, I, I would have been like, okay, I'll try. But I, I really, I really see it now. I, it's, it's a great thing for our school. We have a pullout autistic unit in our school, and they come to PE classes with um, rant, uh, different homerooms over the year, depending on their age level. So, I, I had this child that would come to PE sometimes not come to PE other days. And I never really knew when he was going to be in attendance. And it was always kind of told to me in the framework of he's not having a good day. He, you know, he didn't make it to the, the time slot that the PE class was held at and uh, he wouldn't be there today or I, I wouldn't hear from them at all. And so we had a lesson from Health Moves Minds that involved the parachute. And he happened to be there that day. And I was so excited because um, I knew he would love it. I knew the other kids would love it. And I just happened to take my, my phone <laughs> under the parachute with me and take a picture of this child. And the, the paraprofessional was on the outside. If anything happened, I told him I'd be on the inside if anything happened. And I just happened to take a picture of, of this child with the most amazing um, grin, just soaking up the moment of the parachute rising. And everybody was on their belly with just their heads in the side of the, the parachute. And you can imagine what that looks like, but I got it on a picture with this, with this child. And so that was a really a great example of how the kids included this child in PE class. The child was capable, successful, um, loving it, and truly benefited from the experience. And I just happened to catch it, catch it on my phone. So when the lesson was over, I was talking to the, the paraprofessional and I shared the, the photo and she goes, Oh, you have to text that to me. I'll send it to the mom. And the, the teacher forwarded it to the mom and she was just ecstatic that her kid was able to participate in a, a typical lesson in PE class and whether or not, you know, the parent knew what was going on in that moment, the parent probably knew that elementary school kids play with the parachute in class and my child got to be a part of that. So, um, the reason it is such a success story for me and that I remember it all the time is that every time, every day from February to May that that homeroom had PE, that child was there at the doorstep ready to join in. And so they just made a point of obvious, um, specific, um, you know, designated point to be there. Uh, like it was an appointment that could not be missed. That kid was going to be at PE that day. And I saw him the rest of the year, which thrilled was, was thrilling as a teacher to have that happen. And it was just because they participated one day and I was able to actually show it to the parent, which I'm grateful for. I'm, I'm grateful for that moment that I had my phone under the parachute, but I'm even more grateful for the health Miss mind lesson where the kids could participate together. Um, typical kids. And this happened to be this child with autism. So it was, it was a really good thing. 
this is what how I introduce the program to my students each year. Um, and it's it's also a question I could give to a, a peer in the physical education world. Uh, you know, do you want to learn about your health and raise money for a good cause? Uh, this is exactly what Health Moves Minds does. We learn about our mental health and how uh, we can include kindness in our life. And we also raise money for a good cause of not only our own school, but we split it with as our charity of choice. And so when I, when I say those two things about our own health and giving money to others, um, the kids are instantly on board. And I, it really is that simple also for a physical education teacher. Do they want to spread kindness, teach kids about kindness and raise money for themselves or a charity? That's all they have to ask. And, and they're, I hope their answer is yes. And if their answer is yes, Health Moves Minds is for them.